Welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be messing around with the awesome Lenovo SR650 and integrating that into vCenter and hopefully also give it that uh, common storage on the unnamed NAS up here so to, uh, to migrate uh, virtual servers from one VMware host to another VMware host they have to have some common storage so it will move the data to that common storage or at least use that common storage for uh, for the transfer and um, then move it over to another another storage each server can have its own storage and transfer from one own storage to other own storage as long as they have some common storage and that is one of the features that you use vCenter for there's a lot of other stuff that it also do but that's the one that I'm gonna be needing today um, this video is sponsored by me go visit my shop where I try to sell you stuff uh, that I have had laying around for way too long <laughs> um, it has been a good week for that I have sold no less than 20 servers that's uh, one blade sensor and a whole bunch of servers blade servers and some RAM and a couple of network cards so it's been a good week go check it out um, awful prices but well you support what I do here um, they're not all that bad shipping sucks though but yeah back to the video I am gonna go to the computer in the living room. I'm gonna see if I can Registrate this in vCenter Okay, we have moved into the living room and in front of me here I have vCenter and I have to switch the screen so that you can see that There we are. You can see in the top that my vCenter is uh, Well, it has that address. I guess it, it does show something so that must be right and a standard username for it is administrator and you put that uh, thingy behind it so um fully qualified dns name or something yeah and a password and then you log in and then you see all your well the part of your vmware environment that has been integrated into um to be center so there we are we see something here that is complaining about using too much ram that is my pfsense router assigned too much ram to it it's running on not a lot <laughs> but it has always been doing a good job so yeah, no complaints there so um, have i not even given it one gigabyte of ram that's yeah that's just how greedy i am the server itself has quite enough and it has 256 gigabytes of ram so yeah maybe maybe i should um, give PFSense a, a gigabyte of RAM something but never mind that's not what we are doing today we need to add another host here I forget where we do that uh, new data center no that's not it uh, could it be down here yeah add host and it's complaining about something it's complaining about those two hosts that has been absent for forever and that is probably right I have probably reinstall those several times i think this is actually last time i migrated i migrated from a m3 to the m4 and i have kept this one around you see it has kind of the same file structure or yeah you can call those file structures for vmware and i have just used that again so i think we can um, we can probably retire that remove from inventory Yes, that's gone. And then we'll clean this one out as well. I have no, it's, there is no, it does not recognize any virtual machine. So we do that, it's a bit cleaner. And we should have those go away. But never mind, let's see. We need to add our host. There. And we can use the host name or we can use the IP number. I think it's that one. And to log in on an individual host, you use root. And that is the right server. So I have the IP number there. Uh, I think we're just gonna borrow that. Copy. Go back here, put in the IP number. A location, we're gonna put it in the same container, yes. Uh, next. 
username password. That's the root password that I was just talking about. There, next, and it should tell me that ah, the certificate stored for these sensor cannot verify the blah blah blah. That's because it has a self signed certificate, I guess. But yeah, this is just fine. I trust myself. I did this. It tells me what server this is, and that should be just about right. Looks like um, what we installed last time, so that's good enough. Next, and there is some licensing that I probably have to cut out because the licensing is right there. That next, this is kind of important. You can have vCenter control everything. You can have so that you can still log in as root and do different stuff on the individual hosts. I kind of like that because sometimes I dig myself in a in a trench and have to do something stupid to get around the center. You can leave the log mode disabled so that everything, but I'm just gonna go to normal here. And I usually only need to go through the local console or the center, so that is fine. If you use the strict, you can only go through the center. The direct uh, access to the host will be stopped. Next, discover virtual machines. There is no virtual machines on it, so that is awesome. There's nothing to discover and good to go. And it's down there. I think it will take a little bit before it's, it's really good to go. Let's see what it's complaining about though. Oh, and it stopped complaining. So it's really good. It's not using any resources. It has storage. It's using 1.4 gigabytes out of a tiny bit that's available but i don't think we have configured any disks on it okay uh, actually i think i have done the restrictive mode too much already i'm not able to log into the <laughs> to the host anymore through the direct access to it so back here i found the restricted mode under the host on the security and I think we're gonna try and edit that and disable that and have that be disabled instead. And hopefully I am then able to log in here. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I uh, just locked myself out. I was gonna be messing with the with the storage in here. Storage. See, we have some drives here that has not been configure though these are local drives so we have we have a four terabyte there is that a data store let's see data stores there is just that's the ssd that we are booting on as this is a larger ssd the rest of the ssd is used as a data store so um, we have that it's not that big but it's on the boot drive so probably don't use it too much and so we can take some of the other devices here and, and create new data store and i have i have a single ssd here that's about two terabytes on the disk 1.92 comes to about 1.75 usable data space here so let's make a data store out of that we're gonna call that Next, use full disk there. And next, each okie dokie. And while it's doing that, I was in the Xclarity controller. The Xclarity controller is what you access when you type in the IP number of the of the service management um, IP. And it's the built-in stuff that is inside the Lenovo server and you can access it. It's not to be confused with the Xclarity administrator, but those two does work together. So the Xclarity administrator can have many Xclarity controllers under it because it can, it can manage a lot of servers and each of those has a controller. So in here, we can configure the rate setup because this is a newer server, so we can, we can see some stuff. We have one array 
and that's the there's two four terabyte spinning drives in there and these are uh, smr drive so that's the shingle magnetic media or something and they are not to be used for running stuff it's uh, they're really good for storing stuff long term that is not used very much it's a it's a storage disk it's not a production disk so we have uh, two of those and they're in a rate one uh, as you can see here and then if we go over here we have that ssd down here and that is uh, jbod just a bunch of disks that means that it's just passing that single disk through to the operating system which is in this case um, VMware. And in the meanwhile, it has completed that. So now we have our two terabyte SSD, RAID zero uh, storage. Uh, we need the other one. So we will go back to devices here and we'll pick our two terabytes, four terabytes, that one here. And we will create new data store and we'll call that and we're going to use all the space and yes it's going to do the same thing it's going to take a little bit i think there it completed that and it has also figured out that this is not an ssd yeah i could have told it that but it figured that out all by itself so cool we then need our iscosy our shared storage and we need to install a software iSCSI adapter here. Uh, we're gonna do that. We could we could install a hardware iSCSI adapter. I have showed that in a video where you can have an iSCSI hardware adapter. I actually have two of those for sale if anyone is interesting. But those are just one gigabit and the unnamed NAS out there, it has an iSCSI yeah, well, there's 10 gigabit access to it, so we're gonna we're gonna make a software one. So we're gonna go to adapters here, and we can see our different uh, storage adapters that are installed. But there is a software iSCSI adapter up there, so we're gonna click that, and it's loading. I don't know what it's loading, but it's disabled. But now I'm curious what this ends up with. Well, this has been loading for a bit. Nothing has happened, so let's try and enable it. Let's see what it comes up with. Yes. Okay. I came to think of something else, though. Uh, we're gonna go with this for now, but this is a software solution. And I actually need the network card in the server, which is the Intel X722 integrated 10 gigabit control. It's actually that one. It has four ports. It's a, it's a really nice card. Um, it can probably do iSCSI right out of the box. So I would be able to go in to the network card and tell it to connect directly to the NAS and then just present the drives to the operating system directly as an HBA iSCSI um, thinky. Uh, that would be a nice project for another day. Uh, that would be rather cool. That means that when the server has booted, it has those iSCSI drives and we have the hardware managed storage instead of software managed storage. Uh, I kind of like that. But a project for another day, I just came up with that. We can change the name of this if we don't want this awesome name. Uh, I think we're just going to go with that. We need to uh, add some security. I forget if I need to log in on my NAS. Uh, I have just checked. I haven't set up any security. I'm not sure if we need to add a port. No port binding. Uh, this is which way out of VM where the, the iSCSI is gonna go. So it would have been, if I wanted this to have a dedicated port, I could do this here. Uh, but I think I have to add the port that is actually available. So we'll just select that one and it's going to use the same port as everything else. Which, uh, if you want real good performance, you would probably put this on a separate, its own iSCSI port. But it also uses one more connection in your 10 gigabit switch. So, yeah, being 
straight you just stay on that one and it will share the connection with everything else and um, then we need to uh, oh, my bad the static one is well uh, i need to add a lot of data uh, i think it's the dynamic one we have to have or i can just add the ip address and it will figure everything out for me and uh, i am lazy that way yep. so let's try that Oh, it kicked us out. How rude. Now we have an iSCSI adapter. Let's try that again. Okay, so now we have an iSCSI software adapter down there. And if I mark if I mark anything else, I can't do anything up here, but if I mark that one, which was wrong, uh, more storage. If I click there. I can click here and then I can configure it. And now with the dynamic target here, it has found some static targets for me. And save configuration. Devices. Ooh, 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 we have something there. Normal, degraded, one terabyte. Oh, we have another one. Um, two of them. Okay, I cheated. I couldn't figure out if it was this data store or iSCSI connection or this iSCSI connection that I needed to add. So I went on to the unnamed NAS and I disabled the wrong one, the, the, the one for uh, Proxmox. And that's why this one is giving an error up here now because it has been disabled. So I know that it's this one that I need to, to add as a storage and I need to do that in a way so that it doesn't delete everything out there. <laughs> My mistake. It says over here that it's normal, degraded. I think it's just because it can't see what the NAS is doing. A little bit confused why it gives it that exclamation mark. That's not, that's not nice. It's perfectly fine over on the NAS. Um, but I was looking how to import this. And I actually found over on data stores it has already imported that. So I can, I can go into it and I can see my files on the NAS and it's perfectly fine. So now that has a, a shared data store with the other one. So that's fine. So if we go back here to the vCenter and check our new server here has upgraded there so it's nice so if we have some machine are we able to to migrate that we have a windows 10 outlook test machine here if we right click that and migrate and we pick both compute and storage resources there next we pick the host that it has to go to, the other one, and it checks that should be okay. Uh, which storage? This is, um, it's not used, so we're gonna put it on the slow storage here. Select the virtual format. We want thin provisioning and a policy that is fine. Next. It's gonna go on to the same network as, as it is already on, so that is fine. Summary, yes. finish, and it's gonna move that over. Oh, I couldn't really see that it was doing anything, but it uh, was hiding down here under recent tasks, and it, it's moving over there, so that is fine. It's 31%, uh, it's still gonna take forever. Well, it has to move through the iSCSI and down to slow storage. So that's probably fine. It seems that we um, we have managed what I wanted to do in this video. So should I just show you my little store? We can do that. There is my store where I'm trying to sell you stuff, new stuff. There's a plate center. I only sold one of the two that I have. But other than that, there is servers most of those are gone but there are some blade centers and there is an m2 that i'm trying to sell not going too well there is parts lots of memory 
I have really been taking photos of memory here. Lots of stuff. Yeah, please uh, do go check it out. Some processors. Back to modern in the data center, I guess. Awesome, a video where I actually got something to work. Like in reasonable amount of time. That doesn't happen often. It always teases me in one or the other way. So uh, yeah, that was cool. This video is sponsored by me. Please go check out my little store and well, buy anything to support what I do here so that I can get room for other good stuff. Well, this selling spring uh, came through because I really wanted something, but oh, I haven't got space for it and I have too much already. And yeah, so I, my thought is that if I get rid of some of the stuff, I, I can treat myself with some new stuff. So yeah, <laughs> do help me out. So, but thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.